Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm going to show you a video today. I'm making a wooden spatula for my wife out of a piece of dogwood. If I can get this camera adjusted where I like it. Eh, it's a little better. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fire up the dust collection, get the saw going. I'm going to resaw this piece of dogwood. It's about five inches tall at the tall point. And I'm going to make it a little bit over three eighths of an inch thick because it's got a pretty pretty substantial bend in it from the last blade I was using. I'm using the inch and a quarter Laguna Resaw King right now on a 150 inch bandsaw. This was a uh, just a very dull blade that I used where you can see that it it drifted quite a lot. This is about a it's at least a quarter of an inch in a piece of wood that's only about 14 inches long. So it's pretty pretty big uh, pretty big drift. Certainly noticeable. Okay, go ahead and get her fired up here and do a little resaw cut. is a nice smooth cut. See if I can get you a view that you can actually see that. That fits nice and tight on my fence. I didn't drift at all despite being expanded to about a uh, about 16 inches between the top roller bearings up here and the bottom roller bearings that are down below the deck. So it's got quite a quite a lot of height in the, uh, the space between these. And it's also not pulled nearly as tight as you're supposed to pull it. So it, it had every opportunity to drift, and it did not drift. I'd say it probably didn't drift any at all. Yeah. Let's get you a good view of that. Where'd she go? There she is. 
Anyway, just a brass brass tee nut we had laying around, a washer, and a uh, wing nut to tighten these down, and a couple of slots, a slot in the lower deck that lines up obviously with the slot in the top deck, just for real quick adjustments, take this thing on and off. Okay, Let's see if I can get back in our mounts here. Okay, we're going to get her fired back up. This is a little bit trickier to try to hold this. Safely. There you go. You can see a little bit better. That's the side that we just cut with the resaw king against my fence. My fence is not particularly straight as it is, but you can see that that's almost a perfect cut in a piece of dogwood that's fairly warped and twisted. Alrighty, we will do this as safely as we can. This is also spalted dogwood, as you can see here. It's in the early stages of spalting. Kind of gives you this leopard print look. It doesn't have enough rot to it to be a problem. This is gonna be for personal use, so I don't mind it having a, a little bit of character to it. Dogwood is probably my favorite wood. Very hard wood, very durable wood. And there's that cut we just made. If I get you zoomed in correctly, there we go. Some of this was uh, from where I was pushing on it with the, uh, the little push sticks that made it dig into it just a little bit. But all in all, this is a really good tool. I love love using this Laguna Resocking. I didn't realize it was going to have these um, worm trails going through it. Those were not visible on the surface. I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do about that. I may fill them with urethane or um, if they don't come out the end, which they don't, I may just fill them with uh, CA glue and some sawdust. I keep a lot of dogwood sawdust. It's one of the finest sawdust I've had to work with and works excellent for filling in voids. There's another one I didn't see. A little worm trail, put a little bit of super glue or CA glue in that to fix it. All in all, that's, um, that's the blank. That'll get you started. Okay, that's the start of it. This is obviously not the best piece of wood, but I really like the spalting and the character to it. Go ahead and get the saw shut off. Get the blade shut off. And for those of you who have not used a good bandsaw, this is a Jet, I believe it was a 20 inch originally. I've modified it to where you'll get, um, you still get 20 inches across the throat, but vertically between the bearings, you get about 18 inches. So we've, we've gone from a 14 inch to about an 18 inch by removing the original deck on here and moving the bearings around a, a couple different ways. I'm gonna turn this back on. It is a jet woodworking bandsaw is what they call it. I see the tag over here. I'm gonna turn it on, just let you hear what a good saw is supposed to sound like. And keep in mind, this is a large, say semi-commercial bandsaw. Just barely any noise at all. The only noise you really hear is where it's, where it's touching the bearings. I've got it just barely touching one of the side bearings. So if you, if you loosen those up, you don't hear any noise at all. The saws I grew up using, they just about deafen you even on a bandsaw. So this is, is really uh, quite a pleasant surprise to me to see what a good bandsaw is supposed to sound like. And of course, I've got a rolling deck on this saw. I wouldn't do it any other way. I do have a stop. So the stop won't let it go past that point. I've got a couple of screws. Pop you out here. Pull that back off. I've got a couple of screws back on the back side here. Where we go? In the deck there that um, stop the bandsaw right where it needs to stop. What we're going to do from this point, see if I can get this camera to excuse right. the mess here. This is what I, the microwave works more for wood anymore than it does food. But I've just taken a couple of paper towels, wrapped them up around this put some water on them. I've soaked them with about as much water as they'll hold. Got it kind of centered in there. We're going to set this for 45 seconds. Let it sit for just uh, 20 or 30 seconds to sort of equalize the pressure. I'm not the pressure, the heat rather. And then we're going to put it back in for about another 45 seconds, take it out and clamp it, let it clamp overnight, and uh, probably do the same thing again tomorrow until we get the curve in the handle that we're looking for. All right, 
we are going to try to bend this wood. Get some spacers on here so I've got room for my clamp to move in. Okay, I've just got a little piece of stainless steel laying around from another project. Set that on there to kind of even the pressure out. I don't know if that's going to going to do what I'm trying to do or not. But we're going to try it. Let's see here. See if I can manage to knock everything over here. Just about. I'll put a link in the description below for a few of the tools I've used to make this. We also do sell dogwood currently. If uh, you see this, you might check out a link below. We'll try to link you to our one of our stores online that sells dogwood. It's sort of available as it's available. So in other words, it's not always available. This stuff's pretty hard to get your hands on. For us, it's pretty hard to get a hold of. We don't like to cut down live dogwood trees for a few reasons. Mainly the, um, the dogwood trees just grow so slowly. This little piece of dogwood here, just the rings I'm counting. Well, I can't even see them there. But I'd say a tree that, that gets to be three or four inches wide, typically from the from the ring counts we've gotten, a lot of these come out of the forest. They don't come out of people's yards. The yard trees do grow quite a lot faster. But the ones in the in the forest, the tree that's three or four inches in diameter is gonna be 30 or 40 years old. We've, uh, we've counted trees that are 70, 80 years old that are probably five or six inches in diameter. So the, the trees really do grow slowly and give you some real nice dense wood and some real pretty pinkish wood. Another reason for not cutting a live dogwood tree is they just don't have very much good color to them. The wood, let's see if I can find it. Actually, here's a piece of, uh, there's the difference. That This is a piece of the same tree. This was a limb, and this was a tree we picked up from another tree service who was cutting it down. We didn't cut it, but most of the tree was dead. This real pale white wood, this is dogwood. This is just a fresh piece of dogwood that hadn't, um, hadn't died all the way and hadn't had a chance to sit and cure far as I know, it will never change its color once it's been cut down and brought inside and dried out. If you leave it outside for a few years and just let the elements get to it, you can't, you can't cover it or do anything to try to preserve it. Just let the elements do what they're going to do. You'll end up with this nice pinkish color. If you let it sit even a little bit longer, you can see the spalting on the end of this. You'll get a little bit of spalting in it. Very rarely do you get the black line spalting like what you see in maple wood. So it is... By far, it's my favorite wood to work with. I've worked with a lot of woods. I've worked with a little bit of ironwood. I've worked with a whole lot of um, of cherry and maple and and um, hickory. Worked with a lot of Osage orange, which is real beautiful yellow wood that uh, grows pretty far and wide across central United States, as well as over in Europe too. They've got some similar trees to um, to our Osage orange hedge tree, hedgewood, bodark, all the same tree. But dogwood, for its durability and shock resistance, is definitely my favorite wood to work with. And it bends fairly easily, so you can do what we're doing here. You can see I've already got a pretty pretty substantial bend in it. All I did was um, add some water to a paper towel, put a rubber band on it, and uh, microwave it for about a minute and a half to try to push a little bit of that moisture in there. And as the wood cools, it will also pull the moisture in. So whatever it, it pushed out in the microwave process... It'll go ahead and pull that and more back in just as the wood cools. So it uh, it's a fun wood to work with if you can get your hands on it. Uh, if you see a tree die in a yard, even if you don't let it sit and cure and turn into this pretty pinkish wood, even the the white wood is still quite a lot of fun to work with. But you can see that's taken that's taken a lot more than a lot of wood to be able to take in just a couple minutes as far as bending. I haven't heard it cracking yet, but I I know I'm pushing it pretty close right now to where it would crack. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push my luck much more. Every, every turn I give this makes me pretty nervous. I'm just waiting to hear a real loud snap. And I'm not applying a lot of force. I know it kind of looks like that. I'm just trying to gently turn it down. Okay, 
that is pretty pretty extreme in my opinion i'm not gonna i'm not gonna push my luck anymore tonight i'll come back to this tomorrow and probably treat it again the same way put some moisture on a paper towel i don't know if i'll microwave it or if i'll just let the water soak into it we'll see kind of how i how i feel i heard a little click there i'm not sure what that click was if it's getting ready to snap on me or what but i haven't given this water very much time it's only had this this water on it for about four or five minutes i'd say let's see the video has been going for five minutes so it's probably had the water on it for about seven minutes but it really takes really takes a takes a lot of abuse before the stuff breaks and that's what i like about it is it really does take a lot to break this wood so it's pretty it's pretty forgiving i'm gonna let that sit for a second i'll be right back with a little bit of water to add to it If you work with a grinder and metal, something else handy is just a, a soda pop bottle with a hole in the lid so you can spray it. Okay, it's soaked about till no more water will take into it. I'm going to set this aside, let it set overnight. Growing up in the cabinet shop, my parents had we had a heat box so you could add you could add humidity pressure and heat and do the same kind of process which it certainly works a lot i would say a lot better if you have a heat box and we just had um, standard incandescent light bulbs in it as a heat source 100 watt bulbs and you could easily get um, i know you could easily get 150 degrees in those boxes i don't know how hot we never did to actually check the temperature something my dad built way back when and never had an issue with it so we never never felt the need to test it but this i know you can easily get 250 degrees out of a microwave in just a, a couple of minutes all that heat that quickly is not a, a particularly good idea for wood it can it can split the wood it can over dry it it can catch it on fire it can do any number of things to it but uh, that's kind of what i've got to work with in this little shop so i'm gonna set this aside I'm gonna dry out my countertop here since it's not treated. The, I believe the back is treated with polyurethane, but the deck is not. So I'm gonna set that aside for a minute, dry off, and check back in tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in this kind of video, if you'd like to leave a comment below for something else you'd like to see, we'd love to make another video for you. And certainly we'd like to make the videos that you'd like to watch. So if there's something you would like to see in a cabinet shop, We've got all the tools. We've got belt sanders. We've got, we've got disc sanders. We've got drum sanders. We've got every sander in the world, every kind of router and shaper and planer and and smoother and cutter and deburrer. If there's anything you'd like to see, we've probably got a tool for it. And anything you'd like to see us upload, I'll try to make time to do it. I don't have a whole lot of time between being a real estate agent, a contractor, e-commerce, and what I don't don't spend a whole lot of time on YouTube videos. So if there's something you'd like us to get a little bit more pointed for you, we'd love to do it. All right. If you'd like and subscribe, comment below. Those all help us get these videos out to more people. And if you're interested in any of the tools you've seen in the video, we'll link a few below. We've also got a few other tools we'll link below that we use here in the shop on a daily basis. Thanks for watching.